Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're watching an episode from Star Trek the original series called A Private Little War. Making our way through season two. A Private Little War? Can't really infer anything from that title. It could be anything. We'll see what this one's about today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the comments. How much longer, McCoy? Oh, about another 30 minutes, I've come across some most interesting organic compounds. Large prints. Yes. It's the Mogato. Aside from that, you say it's the Garden of Eden. Or so it seems with the brash young Lieutenant Kirk in command of his first planet survey that these people stayed in their Garden of Eden. Bows and arrows for hunting. Remarkably peaceful and tranquil. Oh, here. Well, we know when they say paradise, we're going to find the opposite. They have rifles. That's impossible. They hadn't progressed nearly that far. And are they fighting amongst themselves? Oh, those are the villagers? No. Tyree, the friend I lived with here. Captain, use of our phasers is expressly forbidden. But something's not right about this. Who are those people with guns? <laughs> Private little war, huh? Oh! Oh, that was a good ragdoll that he did there. Was that a stunt double? Spock. Now, Scotty, have medic stand by. They just shoot at anybody who's got two legs or what? Shoot first, ask questions later. Lucky his heart's where his liver should be, or he'd be dead now. Not good, sir. Well, hurry, sir. We have a Klingon vessel on our screen. On my way. Klingon. Phones. I don't know yet, Jim. They're sending a routine message to their home base. No mention of us. Good. Go to yellow alert. Kirk to sick bay. I'll call you as soon as I know anything. Sick bay out. Kirk is very worried about his pointy-eared friend. They have as much right to scientific missions here as we have. Research is not the Klingon way. Thirteen years ago, those villages had barely learned to forge iron. Shot, flintlock. How many centuries between those two developments? On Earth, about 12, sir. 12 centuries. The fact Earth took 12 centuries doesn't mean they had to. And if there were the Klingons behind it, why didn't they give them breech loaders? Or machine guns? Or old-style handlings? did lasers. not invite a debate. They have good points, though. But there's... We just can't know. We can only speculate. Ooh, those are very low vitals. He'll live or die now, Jim. I don't know which. He couldn't be in better hands. Then you and I are transporting down one. I can't leave Spock at this time. You just indicated you could. <laughs> but if the Klingons are breaking the treaty, it could be interstellar war. McCoy and I are transporting back down. We may have to break out of orbit any minute to keep out of their sight. We'd be out of communicate a range with you. We'll arrange a rendezvous schedule. So on this planet, it's not like the Klingons and the Federation have like... It's not like the I have elected to episode. violate orders and make contact with planet inhabitants here. Oh, violate orders. Well, it won't be the first time. Um, they can only research it because there are inhabitants here. They don't want to mess with their development. I guess the other planet was uninhabited. With no interference with normal social development. I'm not only aware of it, it was my survey 13 years ago that recommended it. I read it. Left alone, they undoubtedly someday will develop a remarkably advanced and peaceful culture. And I intend to see that they have that chance. They're both thinking about Spock. Probably will be a little bit distracted. <laughs> Whoa! He got him. Took full poison. Fangs. He got bit. Enterprise, come in. McCoy, emergency. No contact. They left. Out of orbit. Well, see, it's a good thing you Jump. came, Bones. I can only keep you alive a few hours with this. Tyree. Yeah, the locals will probably have some sort of antidote. Oh. And lucky us, here they are. Emu got to attack him. He's James Kirk. He's a friend of Tyree's. 
has to do something. He's dying. They don't understand? Why is he just sitting there staring? Take him to the cave. I bring Tyree. Oh, okay. Kirk is right about the people here. They are compassionate and gentle. I've learned the hunter Tyree is now their leader. He is expected to return shortly with his wife, who they say knows how to cure this poison. Good. I must keep him warm and alive until then. You and your Garden of Eden. It's always the Garden of Eden. It always gets them, huh? Now, where did these people come from? And how did they get guns? Oh, that must be Tyree. What is she wearing? Look at her hair! You could be killing them instead. In time, the villagers will return to their ways of friendship. They kill your people! I am a Kanutu woman. And seek us because through us they become great leaders. I took you because you cast a spell upon me. <laughs> and I have spells that help me keep you. What is that, catnip? This is strange. Mm, the night of madness. No. Is that a horny plant? Forgive me. There are strangers in our camp. One has taken the Mugatu bite. He dies. Her hair is dark. Bring him when his head clears. Yep, he's all over that catnip. I don't trust her. She's She just looks so different from everybody else. Her clothes, her hair, the way she acts. Was she not supposed to see him do that? I love her bell bottoms. Where's Kirk? You wish me to save him? You must. My remedies require I know what kind of man he is. He was made my brother. No, no. Quickly! Or he dies. When he said she cast a spell on him, he was joking, but I think it was the truth. Oh, no change. It looks about the same. I've seen this before in Vulcans. A form of self-induced hypnosis. You mean he's conscious? Well, in a sense. I suppose he even knows you were holding his hand. Oh, you weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> Good nurse always treats her patients that way. It's, it proves she's interested. <laughs> she will cure him. Is that thing alive? A mako root. Oh. It moves. For those who know where to find it. How to use it. Ouch. So did he tell her about Kirk? What did she want to know about him specifically? Sexual. Together. Together. She's climaxing. She's done. Well, I don't know if it was just the root or the blood and all that theatrics that did it, but I it did something. Had the strange dream. That you were being violated? Sleep. I want to thank you for saving his life. Her wound is gone. Our souls have been together. Oh my. He is mine now. Oh, what? She must sleep also. You're okay with this, Mr. Husband? He is hers. He can refuse her no wish, but it is only legend. Oh, so it's not a law. It's more like a spell. Wonder if that's the same thing that she did to this guy. Some kind of weird voodoo stuff going on. Uh oh, he's gone. Better go find your captain. Jim, what are you doing? Tyree. My old friend. James, it is good to see you. Tyree is tall. I'm a Gatu, but... It's gone. I knew you'd find a Kanotu to cure me. I cured you. 
My wife, Nona. Yes, of course, I should have guessed. Congratulations. Terry, we must talk now. The villagers are new weapons. It is past time to plan. Much has happened since you left, James. Yeah, clearly. And of things to be done. What is her goal? Whose side is she on? Oh, vitals going up. To fluctuate. Just as they should. As soon as he shows any signs of consciousness, call me immediately. If he speaks, do whatever he says. Do whatever he says? Well, that's clear enough, isn't it? <laughs> so we've got a couple people following other people's orders. Have you seen any strangers among the villagers? No. Can you take us to their village while it's still dark? Yes, but the Mugatos travel at night also. And I know you have many ways to make your friend Tyree a man of great importance. What else does she know about us? Tyree has told me much of you. We're simply strangers from... Oh, that's what she wanted to know. Teach me. We once were as you are. There came a time when our... Weapons grew faster than our wisdom, and we almost destroyed ourselves. We learned from this to make a rule, never to cause the same to happen to other worlds. Just as a man must grow in his own way and in his own time. I think that's the best ex explanation we've gotten so far of the Prime Directive. You will not help your friend and brother kill them instead? No! I said I will not kill! Is dying better? Would let him die when you have weapons to make him powerful and safe? Then he has the wrong friends. Ooh. I had the wrong husband. Well, I thought maybe she was like an outsider who was trying to, like, destroy us. I have faith in our friendship, James. Come before we lose the darkness. But it looks like she just wants to survive like this this conflict that's going on and prevail if we find the klingons have helped the villagers there's certainly something we can do that's what's bothering me there's something we may have to do they need to find proof that though that the klingons have interfered now come gun ammunition doctor The division of some skins and a hill woman taken this morning. It's hard to divide one woman. Give her to the man who killed the most of her people. I'll make a cling on of you yet. Well, have they broken the treaty then? Notice what we've done to the striker. When I return, we will give you other improvements. Wonder what the Klingon's goal is here in helping one side of the people. Maybe resources from the planet? This pig iron is almost carbon free. That village furnace certainly didn't produce it. You were right about the Klingons, Jim. Make recorder and scanner tapes of everything. It's a pity we can't include a live Klingon that's just about rapid. It not be difficult to cut the small. <laughs> you rang? I thought my people would grow tired of killing. But you were right. They see that it is easier than trading and it has pleasures, like the hunt. Oh, that's gross. <laughs> Not good. See, all these people have dark hair like her. Nurse, hit me. The pain will help me to consciousness. Hit me. Hit you? No, I can't. Last you strike me. It hit me. Harder. <laughs> Harder. Again. What Kinky. are you doing, woman? Are you... Go! Oh, Scotty. <laughs> Can't you see the doctors are doing their medicine? That will be quite enough. Scotty's like, what the hell is going on? What's this all about? A Vulcan form of self-healing. Thank you, nurse. I'm quite fully recovered. Yes, I see you are. Spark ignites the powder and fires the flintlock. So now he's teaching them? Well, he's just teaching them how to kill and fight. It's not bad enough there's already one serpent in Eden teaching one side about gunpowder. Well, 
Each side receives the same knowledge and the same type of firearm. Have you gone out of your mind? It does put them on equal footing. If this planet is to develop in the way it should, we must equalize both sides again. Jim, that means you're condemning this whole planet to a war that may never end. Massacre after massacre. All right, Doctor. Well, it'll just be a one-sided massacre the other way. What is your sober, sensible solution to all this? I don't have a solution. Do you remember the 20th century brush wars on the Asian continent? Two giant powers involved much like the Klingons and ourselves. Yes, I remember. It went on bloody year after bloody year. The only solution is what happened. Balance of power. And if the Klingons give their side even more? And we arm our side with exactly that much more. And what about your friend Tyree? Will he understand this balance of power? Probably not. He wants to be peaceful. It seems like we need to get the Klingons out of here so they don't they don't keep Since making the Tyree other side won't stronger. Fight, he will be one of the first to die. War isn't a good life, but it's life. His wife is the only way to reach him. Maybe she'll convince him. I think we need to deal with the Klingons first. The Klingons? They haven't spotted us yet, sir. Stand by to signal the captain. Are they back in communicator range, I guess? Oh, this music. Oh, and that look. Oh, boy. You are here because I wished you here. Oh, I thought it was my idea. <laughs> yes. They always believe they come of free will. No, no. Can you smell this fragrance? Some find it pleasing. Yes. I would like it. It's the plant that does it, not anything else. Is this his first time seeing from the outside what she does to him? Yes, you are lovely. Oh no, he's got the horny bug. And he's got a gun! And he's jealous! Good on ya! He says, no, this is evil shit. Oh, he just left? Oh no, the 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 the, the, the thingy. He can't even stand straight. Does he not have his phaser? It's kind of cute. Where's Captain Kirk? Ooh. There. He mad mad. He doesn't know what to do with these emotions right now. Oh no, I don't think it's a good idea that she has that. I do not want it. He, he doesn't want to be tempted to use it again. Jim, who hit you? No, no. She's gonna try to zap them all? I bring you victory for Appella. She's on their side. Fiery's woman. She's a canoe too. We won't trust this division to Appella. Take me to him. He will have the strength to use this new weapon. So she didn't want the weapons for the blonde people. She wanted them for these people? Well, someone might have to be made an example. I'm not oh, quite phaser. following. It's gone. She took it. This weapon I bring you is far greater than your fire stick! Why is he kissing? Oh, God. This is strange. It's a trap. The woman tricked us. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Bones got hit. Is she dead? God, he's killing him. Never wanted to hurt anybody. She's dead. Oh, dang. Well, you're probably better off without her. She was a little bit crazy. 
I want more of these, Kirk. Many more. Oh, now he... Oh, he got his first taste of blood and... And his wifey's dead. I will kill them. Not a peaceful people anymore. Their leader has bloodlust. Looks like Bones just Here. got grazed. Well, you got what you wanted. Not what I wanted, Bones. What had to be. Spock, Captain. I trust all has gone well. Spock, uh, you're alive? Well, I don't know why I was worried. You can't kill a computer. So Spock, ask Scotty <laughs> how long it would take him to reproduce a hundred flintlocks. Tell that to Kirk. A hundred? What? A hundred serpents. Serpents for the Garden of Eden. We're very tired, Mr. Spark. Beam us up home. What? That was the most abrupt ending of any episode ever. So, I mean, they give, the Klingons give guns, so then we give guns to the other people, and then the, like Bone said, so then the Klingons give the other side stronger guns, so we have to give this side stronger guns, and Kirk says, well, we'll just have to keep doing it forever and keeping the balance? Didn't the Klingons break the treaty, the Organian treaty? I don't... I'm confused. This just doesn't seem like the best strategy. It doesn't seem like they've resolved anything. I don't feel good about that. I feel bad about that. I feel dirty. Like, I have to go take a shower of this bloodlust and, and violence. Okay, well, um, the girl was hot. She had a great outfit, loved the pants, the bell bottoms. <sighs> but I think that one is a little bit beyond me. It was... I thought it was going somewhere, and yeah, it just didn't feel satis like a satisfying ending. I was waiting, like, for the, the resolution to this problem, and the solution was just the thing that Kirk said earlier that didn't seem like a good idea at all. I'm with bones on this, like, this is not the way. There was a lot of weird, like, sexual stuff happening in this episode, too. I think the one good thing about this episode was Christine Chapel slapping the shit out of Spock. And then that other guy slapping him. And Scotty being really, really freaking confused. <laughs> that was great. Everything else... Weird. Like I said, the weird, like, sexual stuff. There was a lot of sexual energy. There was this weird, like, voodoo stuff going on with the root and the blood and the wounds going away. Like, what's the explanation for that? And the plant? The horny plant? The catnip? The horny catnip? It's really just, you know, I guess this is just really to hit home the dangers of not following the Prime Directive and interfering we had you know with a piece of the action at least they were able to somewhat kind of find a solution that seemed like it was gonna work at least for a time but yeah they had like a kind of paradise garden of eden going on where they were for the most part pretty peaceful they were advancing at you know a nice natural pace and then the klingons came and showed the uh i can't remember this the names of the sides but the the black haired people showed them how to kill in an advanced way and those people liked it they found pleasure in killing the other side and then we introduced that same bloodlust to the blonde people and also jealousy to this wonderful person that Kirk befriended and introduced a lot of hate and 
a want to kill out of revenge, the jealousy. If nothing else, now it really hits home. And I'm glad they explained how the Prime Directive came about. That was really cool. Because you guys have explained a lot about it. But the episodes that I've seen so far have touched on it but not really given an explanation this was a really good explanation of like why it's important what happened to make it a thing and now we see just the application of that and how bad things can turn really quickly so this is a warning to us all and and Spock got slapped and that's about it I wonder what you guys thought about this episode do you like it do you not like it? Did you change your view on it from when you first saw it? Because, of course, this is my first time viewing, so this is just my initial reaction. So yeah, this was a little bit of a, a weird one for me. Not sure I was really digging it. The good thing is, watching Star Trek is never a waste of time. I had a good time here sharing this with you guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. Hey, I just wanted to add something really quickly to the end of this. I don't really have a point that I need to make, but I wanted to kind of tell you guys something that I got a little bit more information, a little bit more insight to this episode. When I posted this reaction to Patreon, a couple people were commenting, informing me that the war that they were talking about, the Bush Wars in the Asian country, was actually referring to the Vietnam War. Before I get the comments about, well, what are they teaching kids these days? She doesn't know about the Vietnam War. I don't know what they're teaching kids these days. I graduated high school 20 years ago, and I probably learned about the Vietnam War, but my memory is really shitty, and I couldn't tell you what I learned, how in-depth, if I was paying attention, but I did look up a little bit about that. I found out that the Vietnam War was still ongoing when this episode was aired. And I watched this 10 minute little animated video that explained kind of very bare bones about what the Vietnam War entailed and was about, why it started, who was fighting and all that stuff. And it was a cute little animated video with little stick figures and lots of funny jokes. and. I was like crying by the end of it because aside from all the cute little stick figures and the funny jokes, I was just envisioning how awful it must have been to be anyone on any side anywhere near that. The Vietnamese soldiers from the north, the south, the Vietnamese civilians, the American soldiers, the families of the American soldiers who were in Vietnam. And it was really heartbreaking. So I haven't really given too much deep thought. I think I'd have to rewatch the episode again to really give you more of an analysis or anything on what I'm thinking about this episode now in reference to that. But I do think that I can definitely have a greater appreciation looking back on the episode with that in mind, even though I still would say that the wife character was a little bit strange and her place and her role in that is still a little bit strange and confusing to me. Maybe she represents something that I'm not seeing, but yeah, the war was being fought during that time that they were writing this episode and nobody knew how that was going to end and people were scared and people were frustrated. And I think there was just a lot of uncertainty. Some people probably thought, keep the troops there. Let's not make the sacrifices of those who have already died pointless by withdrawing troops. Others probably wanted to withdraw the troops and just be done with it. But I think most people had a fear that no matter what we do, we didn't know how it was going to go. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of put that out there because I wanted you guys to share your thoughts and your experiences on that as well. I don't want it 
to get too political. I don't want arguments and people getting angry with each other in the comments. But, you know, one thing that we've learned from Star Trek is that we're all human and that means we're all on the same side at the end of the day. And that's what's important. But with that in mind, let's talk about this episode. And what are the writers trying to say? Or what questions are the writers trying to pose to the audience? And what are they trying to get us to think about? All right, thanks, thanks for listening, guys. <laughs>